51 crazy music facts everyone should know. Johnny Cash performed dressed all in black, in contrast to most of the major country acts in his day. Rhinestone suits and cowboy boots. Cash wrote the song Man in Black to explain that he wore black for the poor and hungry and those betrayed by age or drugs. Heavy metal band Megadeth was given $8,000 to record their first album. After spending half of it on drugs and food, they then fired the original producer, only to finish it on their own. Soundgarden's song Spoon Man was about a Seattle-based street performer named Artis, who has traveled the world playing the spoons since the late 1960s. He played spoons and various other percussion instruments throughout the song. At the height of his heroin addiction, Eric Clapton was spending $16,000 a week, or the equivalent of roughly $53,000 today, and yet he chose to sing about cocaine instead. The song Boy Named Sue, made popular by Johnny Cash, was actually written by Shel Silverstein. Prince was such a huge Bangles fan, or at least of Susanna Hoffs, that he wrote and then gifted them their breakout hit, Manic Monday. Chad Kroger took a $4,000 loan from his stepfather so his band Nickelback could record their first EP. In truth, only half went towards recording the EP. The other half went to buying magic mushrooms. In 1975, the Grateful Dead played a live show in which they mic'd up live, caged crickets for a song. The drummer is credited with playing percussion and crickets. Lead singer of Alice in Chains, Lane Staley was found laying dead next to several spray paint cans with a fully loaded syringe in his right hand and one still attached to his leg. When he passed, he was six feet tall, but only weighed 86 pounds. Dusty Hill from ZZ Top wanted to feel normal after their worldwide Texas tour. So he cut his hair, got a job at an airport, went by the name of Joe, and would go out on Friday nights with co-workers so he could feel grounded. On Tool's 1996 album, Anima, there's an aggressive song sung in German titled Die Eier von Satan, The Balls of Satan. However, when translated to English, the lyrics reveal themselves to be a recipe for hashish sugar cookies, which presumably taste like the balls of Satan. Oasis guitarist Noel Gallagher complained about Jay-Z being a headliner for Glastonbury Festival, saying that it was wrong to have a hip-hop artist at a festival known for being guitar-driven. Jay-Z then opened his set at the festival with a cover of Oasis's song, Wonderwall. Katy Perry's dad used to manufacture and sell acid with psychologist and author Timothy Leary, and her mom dated Jimi Hendrix. Both are now Pentecostal pastors. The band KISS had to change their logo when performing in Germany because their S's looked like the Nazi SS emblem. Daryl Hall and John Oates from 80s band Hall & Oates first met when gunfire from rival gangs broke out at a music competition they were attending and they ran into the same service elevator to escape. The rock band Journey had their own Atari video game based on the album Escape almost 30 years before Guitar Hero Aerosmith. In 1968, Billy Joel looped some random cables around his shoulder, put on a fake British accent, and pretended to be Jimi Hendrix's roadie to sneak into a concert. He wound up being convincing enough to actually be put to work as a stagehand during the show. Frank Black of the Pixies wrote the song Here Comes Your Man when he was only 14 years old. The song For Your Love by the Yardbirds was originally written by an 18-year-old Graham Gouldman, best known now for his role in 10CC. The power ballad, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing, recorded by Aerosmith, was originally written by Diane Warren, who initially envisioned it being performed by someone like Celine Dion. The revered jazz composer, Charles Mingus, not only trained his cat, Nightlife, to use a toilet instead of a litter box, but he then published a four-step guide called The Charles Mingus Catalog for Toilet Training Your Cat. Nick Drake recorded the album Pink Moon in four hours, with himself on all instruments. When it was released in 1972, it only sold 2,000 copies. But in 2000, 25 years after his death, Volkswagen used the title track for an advertisement, and the record sold 74,000 more copies. He was known to have despised commercialism. Brian Eno composed the Windows 95 startup sound, and Robert Fripp, Guitarist and founder of King Crimson composed the startup sound for Windows Vista. In 1969, Jimi Hendrix invited Paul McCartney to join a supergroup with Miles Davis and Tony Williams, but McCartney, who was on vacation, never responded. Interestingly, this was the same vacation during which the Paul is Dead rumors spread. Although the supergroup never formed, the telegram is now displayed at the Hard Rock Cafe in Prague. In 1973, Stevie Wonder was the passenger in a vehicle that hit a logging truck. The truck lost its load, 
and a log struck Stevie in the forehead, leaving him in a coma for 10 days. His friend, Ira Tucker, was the first to elicit a response from him when she sang Higher Ground in his ear. Dave Holland, who played drums for Judas Priest from 1979 to 1989, was convicted in 2004 for attempting to a teenager with learning disabilities who was taking drum lessons from him. He was sentenced to eight years in prison. Sonic Youth recorded videos for every song on their album, Goo, and then made the album available on VHS. Blue Oyster Cult was the first rock band to use an extraneous umlaut in their name, influencing Motorhead, Motley Crue, Queensryche, and Spinal Tap to do the same. Ray Davies from The Kinks has a songwriting credit for Push It by Salt and Peppa, because the song quotes a line from You Really Got Me by The Kinks, which was written by Ray. The band Genesis's debut psychedelic rock album, From Genesis to Revelation, was a huge flop selling only 650 copies, mainly because record stores incorrectly placed the album in their religious section. Matt Cameron of Soundgarden was in a Kiss cover band with his friends when he was 13, until they received a cease and desist letter from Kiss's management. The Grateful Dead hired a sound man and chemist, Owsley Stanley, to mass produce LSD for the band. He is also said to have inspired Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze and was once sought after by the Hells Angels for his amphetamine production. Ian Anderson, the frontman for the rock band Jethro Tull, adopted the flute after he realized he would never be as good as Eric Clapton on the electric guitar. Lemmy Kilmister of Motorhead had a cameo in John Wayne Bobbitt Uncut, a porno film where he finds Bobbitt's severed p and kicks it, saying, oh well, it's not mine at least. In 1978, Jefferson Starship had to cancel a German concert because Grace Slick was too drunk, causing the crowd to riot. They performed the next day, but she was so drunk that she groped female audience members and taunted the crowd for losing World War II. The following day, she quit the band. Al Green's Take Me to the River earned him more royalties from being featured on the animatronic singing fish Big Mouth Billy Bass than from any other recordings of the song. Captain Beefheart, aka Don Van Vliet, used to beat and berate his band members for days at a time until they collapsed into tears or in total submission in order to assert complete artistic and emotional dominance when rehearsing Trout Mask Replica, an album which is now considered a work of art. Elo's debut album, The Electric Light Orchestra, ended up with a different title in the US due to a mix-up. When the American record company tried to confirm the album's name but couldn't reach anyone, they noted, No Answer, which was mistakenly taken as the album's title. Otis Redding died at just 26 years old. His plane crashed on the way to a gig in Madison, Wisconsin, where a band called the Grim Reapers was set to open for him. That band went on to become Cheap Trick. Stone Temple Pilots got their name as an idea of what the initials STP, a motor oil brand, may stand for. Another idea they had was Shirley Temple's put the initialism actually stands for Scientifically Treated Petroleum. In 1986, a group of metal singers released a charity record called Here in Aid to raise funds for Africa. It was organized by Ronnie James Dio and his band. The record also included contributions from Judas Priest, Blue Oyster Club, Ted Nugent, and Twisted Sister, to name a few, as well as Spinal Tap, who performed in character. It happened because no metal bands were invited to the more mainstream Live Aid recording of We Are The World. There is a McDonald's-themed Black Sabbath tribute band in America called Max Sabbath. The band members are Ronald Osborne, Slayer McCheese, Grim Alice, and Cat Burglar, and they combine iconic McDonald's mascots with heavy metal aesthetics. 